Today, we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the September 11th attacks in New York, in Pennsylvania, and also in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget what I was doing when the planes smashed into the World Trade Center towers. Lives were lost and the ones that weren't lost have to bear this pain day in and day out. They never get a break from September 11th. They're forever haunted by the memory. And today you will hear the story of one person, Miss Yvonne Barker. She likes to be called Vani, who was actually in the World Trade Center North Tower when the building was struck by the first plane at around 8.46 a.m. And she will tell you her story in vivid detail. Today we have a very special guest. We have Miss Yvonne Barker, who prefers to be called Vani. Yes, thank you. And she it has she is one of our World Trade Center two time World Trade Center survivors. attack survivors. Yes. And she's here to tell her story and you know we want to you know, congratulate her for even having the courage to even talk about it because I know it's dramatic, but we would like to hear how she's going forward. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me tell my story. I was in the World Trade Center in 1993 uh, when they bombed it, and um, I was on the 86th floor. Um, and I had snuck down outside that day, uh, it was payday, and I snuck down, I was walking around the lobby, and I saw the kids going on the elevator to go up to the observation deck, and I was down there for uh, much longer than I should have been, and uh, then I just went back up to my desk, and all of a sudden, the lights blinked, and the computer shut down, and then came back on, and somebody yelled, Oh, it was lightning, and I remember saying, oh, that was no lightning, and a call came through, and it was told to us that um, the building had been bombed, and we had to evacuate. So we had to go down 86 flights of stairs. Wow. And um, that had to be traumatic. It was very traumatic. It was very traumatic. How fast did you have to go? It took us two and a half hours. Mm -hmm to get down the stairs. The lights went out about, uh, it was on the 86, about the 60 something floor. Mm -hmm. The lights went completely out and we had to evacuate the building completely in the dark, holding on to each other's shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the wounded people who, um, that weren't even really wounded of that high, what it was was um, people who had wheelchairs, people who, uh, were just had issues, you know, you panic disorder and things of that nature. Um, you just move to the side and you let them down. And I just always feel that that was like the dress rehearsal for 9/11. Mm. You know, so on 9/11, it was a beautiful, crisp, wonderful day. I mean, it was gorgeous. And I got to work early that day because I had been getting to work late. Mm -hmm. And um, my boss, who had been out for a while, had came back. So I didn't want him to see me coming in late every day. So mm -hmm. he and I were the first ones to always be in the building. He came in at 7.30 and I came in at 8 o'clock. So that day I stopped and um, I think I got something to eat. And I went to my office as usual and I was early. So I was on the phone with my sister-in-law and um, talking to her. Now, in, in 93, when the building got bombed, it was almost, like I said, it was like this dress rehearsal where I called someone 
and I said, oh my God, and I told my girlfriend, I don't know what happened, the building shook, we have to evacuate, you know, and I gave her all instructions of where everything was in my home to tell my family, because everybody I called, I couldn't get, and I couldn't even get her, but her machine got it. And in 9-11, when the plane hit the building, I was, I just hung up from my sister-in-law, and oh, it's like deja vu. It was mm -hmm. deja vu. Mm -hmm. It was exactly deja mm -hmm. vu because the building shook. And mm -hmm. but the difference was you knew this was much more critical because the computer went completely off and never came back on. And like just say like behind me right now, uh, a complete uh, the whole build, the whole ceiling collapsed. Mm -hmm. And I screamed and I jumped under my desk. And I was praying, and my and my was no one in the building but me and my boss. I mean, mm -hmm. on on in our office. Mm -hmm. And my boss came over to me in a state of shock, and he said, "I just saw a plane. I just saw a plane hit the building." Mm -hmm. And we didn't know anything of and what it was. And he said he saw the eyes. He saw the eyes of the pilot. Wow. He said, I saw the plane hit the building. I saw the eyes of the pilot. Mm -hmm. And he was completely dazed. But I'm under my desk completely packed. Mm -hmm. And he grabbed me and he pulled me out and mm -hmm. he said, we're going to get out of here. Mm -hmm. So we run to now in, they had been doing construction on my floor and we only had one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. So we ran to the only exit and it was absolutely blocked because mm -hmm. as I told you, the ceiling fell. Mm -hmm. And when it fell, we had to literally dig literally dig brick by brick by brick and make a hole mm -hmm. to get out mm -hmm. and we crawled through the hole it was completely black it was completely dark it was just the scariest thing ever mm -hmm. and there was the door and we opened the door but it was so dark and so black we didn't know if it was the floor there we didn't know we didn't we just couldn't see mm -hmm. and it was just too scary to to go out so, so we went went back in. And at that point I had on high heels, I had my pocketbook, and we go back in and he says, Call somebody and he called his wife and I called my sister in law. And because she was at the desk house, she was the last person I spoke to and I told her I don't know what's happening. I said, Tell my daughter I love her. I, I told her, I said, I don't think I'm gonna get out of this one. I don't know what's going on and underneath my desk like we all have extra pairs of shoes mm -hmm. i worked there for 15 years mm -hmm. so i had an arsenal of shoes mm -hmm. so i take off the heels and i put on my shoes uh, i had a backpack i took everything out of my pocketbook and i put it in my backpack i mean as i said 93 you knew you needed your hands mm -hmm. and we knew we needed cloths for our face because so like right. it like was like a drill yeah. it was just it mm -hmm. was you know and the water fountain was right next to me and we had just get, got given, been given these t-shirts and you know I worked for Port Authority of, of New York and New Jersey and we had just been given these uh, t-shirts mm -hmm. and we grabbed the t-shirts and oh, we wet them yeah. with the water and we held on to them and then we go back out again. And you use them to breathe? Or? You use them yeah, to, to be able nose. to cover your face, mm -hmm. the smoke and mm -hmm. all of that just was intense, very intense. And um, this time, when we crawl through, uh, we can see this light. And we open up the door, and we don't see anybody. No. We don't see any people. Uh, I found out much later that my boss and I were the only ones to survive the 86th floor. Mm. All the people on the other side of the plane that he saw hit the building, hit those people. And you were in Tower 1. I was in Tower 1. Okay. I was in Tower 1 when Tower 2 got hit. When Tower 2 came down, I was still trying to get out the building. Mm -hmm. This time, it took it took over three hours to mm -hmm. get out the building. There were so many people. And I have to say that God is so good that there was no bedroom in no hallways. Because I wouldn't be here to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. People were on their cell phones. And 
other people were trying to tell them what was happening and the cell phones would go out. Mm -hmm. And the people, they would be in the middle, and I, I'm witnessing this, I see this, mm -hmm. and they'd be in the middle of the conversation, it's like, what? What did you say? What did you say? Cut off. Mm -hmm. So there was no one that could say, oh my God, it was a terrorist mm -hmm. attack, oh my God, other, the other building has been hit. It was nothing. We just was going down, mm -hmm. going down. By then they put emergency lights in the hallway so the lights didn't go out. But this time there were injured people coming down mm -hmm. and we would just move to the side and let the people come down. But you couldn't go down straight down the 86 flights. You had to go into other little corridors and every time the door opened up, I died because I'm thinking flames or something is going to come through. I prayed, I cried, the water sprinkler was going on so the floors were absolutely wet and it was, it was, it was very dangerous to go down. It was very dangerous and there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people mm. coming in. You know, they would come in from this way, come in from that way, you know, whatever exit and they just, we were all like this together, we were all tight and we were, we were trying to come down, with, you know, but it was orderly, it was orderly. So were you racing? Or were you no, no, everybody, you could only go down, there were so many people, you couldn't even, it, you know, you've been in a crowded whatever, yeah, a crowded you anything, yeah. you, you can't move, you, mm -hmm. you got to go with the flow, mm -hmm. and although we were all scared and everybody wanted to get out, there was so many people, mm -hmm. you just could not move any faster, you couldn't have tried, you know, and people who did panic, people who got crazy, because there were few, mm -hmm. you know, you just moved over and let those people run down the stairs, and let those people go crazy, mm -hmm. we just kept going down and going down. So you kept your peace of mind so you could get out of it. I cried and I prayed and I cried and I prayed and I didn't see help firemen until and, and I, I just think that was the saddest, the, the most difficult, the thing that haunts me in my dreams along with everything else but the one thing back to was these firemen that showed up around maybe the 26th floor and they were all going up and they had their gear on and they mm. were young and they were we were joking with them mm. and we had water bottles and we were giving them water we were like you want up those stairs you're going to need some water and you know they were so nice mm. and so sweet and you know to later find out that they never came back when we know they mm. never came back there was no way out that was no they they went to their death. They helped people at their own peril. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I lost so many friends mm -hmm. in that experience. Um, so what exactly did you do at the Port Authority? I was a graphic designer there. Mm -hmm. I worked there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, they had just, that floor was completely all Port Authority, mm -hmm. but um, Half of us had moved to the 68th floor, and we were the last, supposedly, to move to the 68th floor. Mm -hmm. And they rented the other side to some other people, mm -hmm. other offices and whatnot, mm -hmm. not anything to do with Port Authority. And unfortunately, those people lost their lives mm -hmm. that day. Uh, and basically, that's that's what I did. And <sighs> now, was it um, when you were? Walking out, you said you and your boss were the only survivors. We were the only that. survivors when we finally got to the first floor, and we could see the door. The door was maybe eight minutes, ten minutes away. Mm. Okay, we were on the main concourse, so all the stores and everything that busy the World Trade Center was there, and we could see it, and then. Um, I think the building two must have come down, mm. you know, and when building two came down, that monster thing yeah, that you that, saw, that oh my image. God, it started flying and coming our way. We turned around and everybody started running mm -hmm. and as they started running and the water sprinklers went on and then there was this explosion. Boom.